Hello, I'm Adrian Newton from the James Hutton Institute and together with colleagues we want to introduce you to some of the work that the James Hutton Institute has been doing and in particular this focus is around arable systems and the role of legumes in these systems. Hello, my name is Pete Ionetta. I'm going to talk just for a little while about adding value and legumes can certainly add value to your crop system in many ways, financially as well as the system itself. But I believe there's a central role for legumes in not just a sustainable crop system, but also for an ecological food system. Legumes can be a, a cornerstone species. They offer a range of functional types. Most of you will know what they are. Grain legumes, various forms, pea, fava bean most commonly cropped in Scotland, but also the forage legumes as well. And uh, the UK is at the moment 70% feed import dependent and a little bit higher in Scotland. Mainly as grain legumes and mainly for the pig and poultry industries. It's still a great surprise to me that many people don't really know what legume is. Particularly maybe in policy circles, however, the uh, legumes are a unique group of plants. They can acquire their nitrogen from air through a natural process called biological nitrogen fixation. They need no fertiliser. That's a very simple schematic of a, of a legume. And uh, what I would add is that they are multifunctional and properly managed, as well as being incredibly profitable. They can support pollinators and beneficial insects. They can be used as biocontrol agents. They can improve your soil qualities. The diversity of microbes in your soil can give nitrogen to non-legumes. They can liberate soil phosphorus and in themselves offer high protein and high carbohydrate. The nature of that carbohydrate is also good because it's low GI. It helps promote low glycemic index and uh, low blood sugar and it can also be a source of essential minerals and also many non-nutritionals as well. In my opinion, there's not a lot not to like about legumes. There's an awful lot of work currently going on at the James Hutton Institute about achieving more value from legumes, and we're talking uh, commercial value. Here, we have long-term rotation trials. We have new varieties. Then there are some quite novel types, the Scottish bean being one of those. It's a dwarf, very early uh, ripening type. We have high nitrogen beans up to 35% N. And also we're doing some novel crops as well, novel for Scotland at least, such as lentils and soybean. The PGRO to develop uh, improvements to agronomy. Also we have a very big interest in intercropping of various crop combinations. But for more information, please do the link that's provided here. We develop elite rhizobia and license these at the moment to legume technology. Also, we do soil testing for rhizobia levels as well. And we're also looking more and more into novel processing. We can really command higher commercial values, not so much from the, uh, the cropping system, but from further up the, the value chain. And there's just some examples here with Barney's Beer and our Beaky Distillery on some products that we've developed in partnership with Abertay University. My name is Alison Carley and I'd like to explain some of the work we're doing to understand how legumes can improve the diversity of cereal crop systems. Much of the arable land area in Scotland is dominated by cereal production and such low crop diversity limits the ability of the crop to support a diverse community of organisms. Relying on such a small number of crop species could also be considered risky as our growing conditions become even more unpredictable with the changing climate. The diversity of these crop systems could be improved quite easily by intercropping, that is, growing two or more crop species together in a mixture, for example by growing a legume crop in a mixture with a cereal. Not only does this increase crop diversity, it can bring additional benefits, as intercropping can produce higher yields than when each crop is grown in monoculture. This increased yield results from several processes including better soil fertility, structural support to the crop and pest and disease suppression. Although it's not a new practice, there are many things we still need to learn to optimise intercropping and remove some of the barriers to growing intercrops. This has been a focus of two recent projects, a four-year project called Diversify, funded by the EU, which focuses on spring cereal legume intercrops, and a three-year project funded by the Mains of Lawyerston Charitable Trust, focusing on winter cereal legume intercrops. These projects are producing scientific data and tools to help farmers and agronomists choose intercrops that fit best with their farming system. So you've heard a bit about crop mixtures and some of the benefits of crop mixtures and the work that we're doing to understand how these benefits are delivered, particularly from legumes. I wanted to take this opportunity during Arable Scotland to talk to you a little bit about some of the work we're doing to promote the wider uptake of mixed crops with farmers and also their benefits as a, as a platform for knowledge exchange. So some of the key issues with respect to making use of mixed crops is the knowledge of how to grow them and how to tailor them best to the local environmental conditions and some of the work we're doing is running on-farm trials which are both 
a chance to get more data about where they work best, but also another platform for knowledge exchange with farmers that might be interested in wanting new information on how to grow the mixed crops so they can see them growing in the ground and talk to other farmers about it. The other wonderful thing that these on-farm trials give us is a platform for knowledge exchange and we're using them to work with school children through an Esme Fairburn funded project where kids can get out into the field, literally into the field, to see how the crops are growing and to help us monitoring them and to understand how they impact on farmland biodiversity. And also it tells kids more about where their food comes from and how that food can be grown sustainably into the future. And at the moment we're, we're looking for more farmers to get engaged with the Esme Fairburn work and it would be great if you're interested, just get in touch with us about running trials on your farm. Thanks very much. Behind me here is a trial, which is an intercropping trial, spring in this case, but looking at interactions between cereals and legumes. But what I want to talk about is those type of interactions in winter crops where we want to produce a lot of biomass of the appropriate quality and quantity. We exploit these interactions between species. Winter crops often give you more biomass than spring crops. And we want to look at how much particularly the legume can help in reducing inputs and just having the mixture of different species also helps reduce inputs in terms of things like crop protection. The end use of these crops will be either feed or silage or anaerobic digestion. What we look at is the composition in terms of species, the number and the type, the varieties within each of those species, the proportions and the density which they're put together. The management is critical, how much nitrogen fertiliser you use in particular, but also the cultivation method. And this is one of the things we're looking at in the trial behind me. The effect on the following crop is also really important where you've got a legume and affected by the tillage because we've been direct drilling into the stubble and seeing how much benefit you get from following different intercrops and different legumes in particular. I also want to talk about what we're doing on cultivation methods and this is particularly the difference between inversion and non-inversion tillage or ploughing and either minimum, zero or direct tilling. Varieties change ranking when you grow them under different conditions. So a variety which yields very well under inversion tillage may do poorly under non-inversion and vice versa. Growing on farm, these conditions often are minimum tillage or reduced inputs or maybe use in intercrops as well. So we want to understand the mechanisms that are causing these differences, therefore which varieties you should choose for these different end uses and how resilient they'll be. We're looking for resilience traits. And one of these will actually be resistance to disease, which we know is more effective against certain diseases such as mildews and rusts under non-inversion tillage conditions, probably because of re-establishment of mycorrhizal infections in the non-inversion tillage condition. At Arable Scotland, we've also got quite a lot of information as usual about our extensive work on barley and there are exhibits there on things like nitrogen use efficiency and the whole breeding history behind a lot of our current varieties. And all that information is valuable for breeders, but also valuable for how we use these in real on-farm situations. Hi, I'm Cathy Hawes and this is our Centre for Sustainable Cropping Long-Term Field Scale Platform, where we're developing an integrated cropping system to improve arable sustainability. The integrated system aims to improve soil biophysical quality and enhance arable biodiversity whilst maintaining crop yield and quality. The platform extends across these six fields in the south of Balrodery Farm. We have all seed rape in the near left field, fava beans in the near right, then continuing round to spring barley, potato, winter wheat and winter barley. Each field is divided into two, comparing integrated management in one half with standard commercial practice in the other. Management practices include cover cropping, undersown clover, direct drilling, organic matter inputs, precision ag for fertiliser placement and IPM strategies. We are monitoring key indicators of biodiversity, soil, crop productivity and financial margins. These are used to assess the effect of cropping practice on the whole system and help identify opportunities for improving the long-term resilience of agroecosystems. The platform is an open access resource for academic and industry research and a demonstration site for a wide range of topics relating to arable sustainability. Come and visit us at the CSC in Greaves House virtual tours to find out more.